All right, guys, so we got some really big news here, man. This is an update on the Biden Marianne Williamson primary race. Now, Marianne Williamson has announced her uh, candidacy. I did do a video talking about that candidacy breakdown. I'm going to give you guys a breakdown of what's going on. Actually, I have to make some pretty big uh, alterations to what I had said previously because I think I miscalculated this whole situation. And I'll explain what I mean. So Marianne Williamson appears to be surging in the polls as of right now. Now, what we can see is this is an article from Morning Consult. This is actually like three weeks ago. This was March 6th, uh, 2023. It says Biden leads Williamson by 73 points among Democratic primary voters. So it's just 4% back Marianne Williamson and 9% off for someone else, suggesting a little appetite for a Biden primary challenge. Now, this, this seems to be like kind of manufacturing consent from the media. Or not manufacturing consent, but um, just basically molding whatever narrative they want. <clears throat> and according to political science, we do know that the media does, generally speaking, control what people believe. We do know that from John Zoller's uh, RAS model. You can look that up if you want. It's a political scientist who has this uh, very detailed model on public opinion. I'd recommend checking it out. Um, but 4%. So 4% is really low. That's like really low. 4%. It's a very low number. It's single digits, very low. Um, but what it appears is she's actually surging. Now, this is another uh, poll that came out from Echelon Insights. This is a poll where it says 2024 National Democratic Primary, Biden 73, Williamson 10%. Now, it's hard to explain to you the difference between 10% and 4%. It's weird, right? Because it's only six points. You think it's not that big of a difference, right? But 4% means you have like no chance, like you're just like nothing. 10% is actually something. And there's this weird effect in politics, this momentum effect, where the higher you get in the polls, the more it impacts your, your numbers. It's really weird. But it's kind of like in basketball. It's like if you go back to back, you get a dunk and then you score a three, that's five points. But that five back to back points is worth way more than those only five points because that momentum of getting those back to back is going to make a momentum where you're going to go back again and get a nice defensive stop and go back, dunk again. It's just like this momentum effect. There's also something in uh, statistics that I learned that's really cool. It's called the interaction effect. It's like if you take a peanut butter sandwich and a jelly sandwich separately, they're not that good. Let's say you're scale raking them on one of one uh, out of out of ten. The peanut butter sandwich maybe a two out of ten. The jelly sandwich even worse, like one out of ten. You add them together, that's three out of ten. But when you take a peanut butter jelly sandwich together, dude, that's like a ten out of ten. Peanut butter jelly is one of the best things ever created. So there's some kind of interaction effect there that's that's not the same as the two effects added together. Same thing with drugs. Drugs have an interaction effect. Some drugs will kill you from that interaction effect. So be careful. So just this alone but like 10 percent is serious so like 10 percent is like whoa and this early like i did not expect her to already be hitting 10 percent and so i looked up the pollster ratings because if you guys don't know there was a lot of backlash towards pollsters in the 2022 midterm election because there was supposed to be this big red wave and it turned out psychelangelo there was no red wave it was fake it was a facade you know what i mean it was a it was a woozy it was a wazi you know what i mean so uh, what happened was a bunch of dog shit pollsters were included in all the polling aggregates because uh, 538 and, and uh, you know, um, I'm blanking on the other side. Real Clear Politics, they aggregate a bunch of different uh, pollsters together, right? <clears throat> and so what we can see here is uh, I checked because I was like, man, maybe this is just some progressive, you know, BS, like a slanted pollster. And it's Echelon Insights is rated AB. So it's actually a solid pollster and it doesn't appear to have any like outward political slant. So this is serious. So I think I miscalculated because my analysis in that video, first of all, let me just say this. I should have said this in the beginning. Marianne Williamson will not win the primary. I can personally guarantee you that I will bet my life on it. But only I think the only people are like, there's like going to be some delusional supporters and there's going to be like, I don't know. I think Kyle Kalinske is genuinely can like, he genuinely thinks she can win, which is like, that's crazy, dude. She has no actual chance of winning. We're not talking about that here. We're talking about a serious primary challenge that does some damage, okay? Because just you can get tons and tons of bennies without winning. You can put pressure on the candidate to extract progressive policy positions. You can change the opinion of the people in the Democratic Party, blah, blah, blah. That's what Bernie Sanders did, even though he didn't win, right? Um, and so uh, what my analysis fuck up, I think, was I kept thinking about People are people going to vote for Marianne Williamson, but the problem here is she's going to get a lot of support as people who are voting against Joe Biden. 
So the truth of a lot of Bernie Sanders' 2016 support was he got a lot of support because he was the non-Hillary voter. He was the non-Hillary candidate. So a lot of the people who voted for Biden in that, or Bernie in the 2016 primary voted for him, not because they were like, I like Bernie or I love Bernie. They said, I hate Hillary. I think she's the most unpopular candidate in all of history, um, presidential candidate in all of history. Biden is similar in a different way. Biden is hard to hate. It's like Biden is weird. He's hard to hate, but also hard to love. Nobody has said, I hate Biden. Nobody says, I love Biden. It just doesn't exist. You're just kind of neutral. And that works amazing against Donald Trump because a Trumpian election becomes all about Trump and not about Biden. So in that case, you run the basement strategy, stay in the basement, don't say anything. Trump blabs nonstop. People vote on Trump and you win. So he's somehow still running against Trump. It's awesome for him. It's great. But consistent polling has shown that like half the party says we want a different nominee. So what's going to happen is a lot of people who don't like Marianne Williamson, because Marianne Williamson is a complete quack. She's a lunatic who's pushed like crazy, ridiculous things about curing diseases in complete BS ways. She's a lunatic. And I don't think she's genuinely motivated by policy positions like Bernie Sanders was. She turned her back on Bernie and Elizabeth Warren on Medicare for All in the primary, actually. I don't think she's genuinely like, I want Medicare for All. I don't think she actually cares. I think she's a careerist who's trying to advance her career, which is how most people are, to be fair. I think Bernie was one of the rare people who was not like that. Um, so I don't think they're the same. I think she's trying to advance her career. FDR was like that too, just so you guys know. FDR didn't care about anything ideological. He didn't actually give a fuck about poor people or anything like that. It was just at the time, that was the thing that was most conducive towards getting power. And I think politically that might end up actually being better because like Bernie Sanders sucked as a politician. Like in terms of strategy, he had zero. He was terrible. Whereas like Obama and Bill Clinton, those are like genius politicians, genius politicians. He sucked. He was just very, very real, and his positions were super real, um, and people, a lot of people resonated with it, but he didn't have any political strategy to him. So that's like the downside. So it's hard to win without good political instincts and strategy. So I think that Marianne Williamson here is going to get significant support again. Repeat, she will not win the election. However, she's already at 10%. I can't believe this, dude. Holy guacamole. We're in March, late March. And she's already clocking in at 10. 10 is a good amount. And then this is only going to grow. It's going to end up going, I think. Now, a lot of this depends upon how the media covers it because people's perception of things is based on the media. Again, it's heavy political science evidence from John Zoller's RAS model of public opinion that shows that the media heavily, heavily impacts people's opinion on politics, especially those who are the most educated and paying attention to politics. So they're probably not going to really you know, cover it that much, but she might get some coverage. The other concept here at play that's heavy is uh, is one that my political science professor calls front loading. And so as you guys know, the Iowa and New Hampshire primary, which are the first primaries, they winnow the amount of uh, viable candidates. Winnowing means to like lessen the amount of something. So basically after Iowa and New Hampshire, tons of candidates have to drop out, even though they're tiny states with five people and they're all an avalanche, right? They're all white. So it's a very stupid thing because it doesn't represent the actual populace of the elections, which is like, we need to alter that, right? But um, because of this, remember, Biden has, <clears throat> uh, he has elevated South Carolina to go first. And so New Hampshire is pissed. So they're going to be really motivated to vote for Marianne Williamson. And they're still going to go early. They just won't be first. So when they get that support, when she gets that support from Iowa, New Hampshire, she's going to get media coverage and be like, whoa. And that has that interaction momentous effect we see in statistics. And so she's going to continue to grow. I would say her ceiling, her ceiling is probably around 30, 35%. But dude, it's like, if she gets 30 or 35%, that's fucking massive, bro. Like, that's huge. I did not expect that. But I undercounted. I didn't include in my analysis. I kept thinking my analysis was, are people going to vote for Marianne Williamson? False question. The question is, how many people are going to vote for Marianne Williamson? either because they like Marianne Williamson or against Joe Biden. That's also another fallacy where a lot of the presidents would be like, oh, I got elected and so I have a mandate to do whatever I want. Psych, people don't vote for you a lot of the times and they don't even know what you support, really. Uh, they don't know your actual policies and so the mandate thing is BS because like, for example, Biden got, he, no one, people didn't vote for Biden. He's like, I love Biden, psych. They voted for Biden because they hated Donald Trump. It's two different things. So that, just like it helps him in the general, is going to hurt him in the primary, okay? It's going to hurt him. So I think Marion Williamson is actually going to make a serious dent. Um, I don't really believe in this primary challenge because I don't want to be this rebellious group. I want to take over the party, and I think this is just going to piss off the moderates. 
And since millennials are not becoming more conservative as they age, we should play the long game and the long game will get us the win. Um, but Marion Williamson is surging right now. Going from four to 10, not only is it, that's more than a 100% increase. It's what, like 150% increase um, statistically. But not only that, but it's like gonna have a momentum effect um, and it's happening super early. So it's like, this is only gonna grow. It's not gonna go down. So I'm shocked by this. But Marianne Williamson is also, she's a white woman. So she has that benefit. It's like all these women like on The View and stuff like that, it's gonna be tough to take Biden, an old white guy over a very educated, intelligent woman, woman, right? Successful woman. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be a tough thing to do. And so she's gonna have a lot of people she can appeal to because she is a very educated, successful woman, right? A working woman, that's what she is. So a lot of women are going to struggle with being against that. And women are a huge, huge, um, I don't know if it's in political science, electorate or selectorate. I'm not sure. I forgot. Uh, but, you know, they are a big part of the electorate, right? So we're going to have to see, like, she's going to be a dangerous candidate in terms of being this, this anti-Biden. She's going to be serious, but she won't win. But uh, hopefully she'll be able to actually extract some, like, progressive positions and stuff like that. But um, she'll also have that card because remember, Bernie was a dude. So it's like they just used a bunch of sexist stuff against him. They're just really sexist against him, right? You won't be able to be sexist against Marianne Williamson because she's a woman. So you can't say, oh, you're a man. And so I hate you. You can't say that. In fact, you're going to be inclined to support him. So it's going to be a really troubled thing for a lot of the people in the Democratic primary. She's low-key going to be tough to deal with. And Marianne Williamson actually hires like a real... She's actually hired real consultants for political strategy, and I can already see it because what she's doing, her strategy is, this is genius. I, I thought Bernie Sanders, I said this during the promise, like, Bernie, you need to do this. I think she's just going to grab onto FDR's nutsack and just not even look up and just say, Social Security, we want to be the party of FDR, we want to do Medicare, etc. Pure fucking genius. Pure fucking genius. That is the biggest, you know... Uh, group is the 65 plusers and by positioning yourself as that person you are going to make yourself the most viable and young people like those policies too because those heavily go in line social security and medicare heavily go in line with you know government uh spending and stuff like that so young people will fuck with that too so it's just she actually has real political strategy and i almost feel like i'm abused because i had to go through this political primary twice of bernie sanders who's just a horrifyingly bad politician with zero political skills and just be able to, and I see like, I see like the most basic bare bones of political strategy. And I'm like, I'm like salivating at the mouth because Biden has the same thing too. He has the same, he actually has political savvy. Like you saw the shit that he's doing with the state of the union address, like pinning the social security on the Republicans, repealing it. And all the, we went over this in my class. It was like all the people that watch the state of the union are all geezers. So he, he is just pure political genius. And the shit he did with the student loan debt thing when he knew it was probably going to get unconstitutionalized anyway, shut down. Just pure genius, right? So Marianne Williamson is going to be a threat, not to win, but to do damage. And so I think my analysis was wrong uh, for said reasons that I broke down now. But wow, <laughs> I'm shocked, bro. Like, I'm shocked, bro. Ski, I did not expect this, G.